What's happening, you guys? Norcam coming at you live here on the uh, shores of Lake Washington on 405. In fact, driving by the Seattle Seahawks practice facility. Let you guys take a look at that real quick. Right over there. You see that? Through the trees. There it is. It gives you a better shot when you see it over there. I had to jump on here briefly um, because uh, rumors about the sh about Richard Sherman being traded from the Seattle Seahawks uh, has been swirling around for the last few days, and uh, it looks like the rumors are a little more real than we maybe had thought they would be. It's certainly what I thought would be, and uh, most of the evidence of this coming from the fact there was an interview done with with the GM. John Schneider, where he was asked about it specifically, saying, is this true? Is this rumor really true? And he did admit to the fact that they are talking to other teams about Sherman, um, and it's even possible that they're actually soliciting calls to other teams. There's the Hawks facility right there, where the team's plans are being made as we speak. Um, but let's, let's, let's deal with the facts. At this point, what we do know is that there has been conversations. It's been open that uh, the teams are talking about the possibility. Now, he also went on to say that 98% of the time when these types of discussions are made, 98% of the time they don't happen. So there's nothing concrete. There's no uh, deal in place. I think they're just admitting to the fact and being open to the fact that it's being discussed with other teams. So... And Sherman is aware of it, so it's not like there's any secrets being hidden here. In fact, I think they're trying to be as open about it. Sorry, guys, I can't really read your comments because I'm in the car driving right now, and I don't want to be distracted from the road, so I'm just going to try to talk. I'll try to jump on if I get a pause here. Um, but the reality is uh, Sherman has a couple years left on his contract. I mean, he's going to get paid a lot of money, double digits, to stay on the, on the roster. And so there's two ways to look at what's going on. It's possible that the team, clearly last season, there were a lot of issues between Sherman and the coaching staff and even possibly the front office about the way things were being run, uh, about some of the, you know, the plays being called, handling things a little more openly than they should have been. And it's possible one scenario is that the team is having issues with that and are thinking about trying to you know get get some value out of him knowing that they don't want to keep him on the team much longer that's one possibility the other possibility is too is that maybe Sherman actually wants to go elsewhere and is doing everything other than actually demanding a trade perhaps he is actually expressing to the office you know without saying so publicly that maybe he is interested in looking elsewhere and that the Seahawks are simply trying to consider all options. Now, obviously, this is not, Sherman's got plenty of good years left to, um, of playing years left. He is still in his prime and still is entitled a lot of money. And like I said, he's got two years left in his deal. And so he is not going to be given away for free. And you know, so the Seahawks, if any, anything were going to be done, they're, he's, they're going to demand a lot of money for his services. Possibly we're talking like a first round draft pick maybe with coupled with something else. So it'll be interesting to see how, what transpires. But I think, I don't think, this is my thought. This is what I think is going to happen. I don't think anything's going to happen anytime in the next few weeks. If anything will happen this year, it will be when we get into the draft. Uh, the, the thing about this draft, it's a very corner-heavy draft, so we have a lot of cornerbacks coming up and a lot of teams who have needs at corner. They may not be wanting to spend a lot of money and giving up, giving up a lot to get Sherman because they might be able to pick it up in the draft. However, let's say teams who are hoping to get some of those corners don't get them and they're, la and they're seriously missing in the cornerback department. That might be the time where they got to go to the Seahawks and go, well, we didn't get the guy we wanted. We need someone like Sherman to we're one player away in our secondary to get us over the top and then they might be in a position where they might want to talk to the Seahawks and get serious about giving up some substan substantial uh, 
resources to get his services. So, what I so that could happen. What I'm hoping will happen is that none of that will play out. Seattle will have his services for another year, but then most likely when it gets to renegotiating time for his after for his final year of the contract, that Seattle will not renegotiate, and at that point will seriously start looking at op- uh, offers to uh, move him. Sad as it is, um, Legion of Boom, who is really defined by three key players, and that would be Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, and Cam Chancellor. This is probably the last year that all three of them will be playing together. Just mostly not because nobody wants them to play together, but you got all three of these guys whose contracts are going to be up in the next two years. They're going to have to make choices. They, I don't, they can't. I don't think they can afford to keep all three. There was a day when they could, and back in early two, uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, when uh, the players were in their rookie contracts, we can afford all that depth. But now, with all these guys being star players, we'd be fortunate to keep two out of the three. And so, most likely, Earl Thomas will be the guy they'll keep. And who will go to the wayside is either going to be um, Sherman or Cam Chancellor is my guess, but that won't be until next year. So <clears throat> that's a tough one. If you were to ask me who would I who would I want to lose of those three, that's that's really tough. I think you, you can't go without Earl Thomas. And Cam Chancellor is getting up there, but he's man. I still wear I still wear number thirty one right there on my wrist. He's he's the guy I like, but you know they're they're both getting up there in age, and they got to get if they are going to have to make a move, they're going to try to get value. They're going to have to try to get value with them. Getting a bad connection here, so I don't know if you guys can see me still. Verizon, come on now. Um, so, that's kind of the situation I think that, we expe- that, that we'll expect to see. It's going to be, I, I don't want to see it happen. You know, I think, I think, I like Sherman. I think he's still a great cornerback. One of the best, if not still the best in the game. But things are still business, and last year was a very strange year in terms of the off-the-field or sideline antics, which uh, I wish didn't play out the way they did, but, you know, it happened. So now they got to deal with the consequences of that. So those are the scenarios I think are going to happen. You know, if we're going to see it right at the draft pit, uh, right around the draft, or we won't see it at all, at least not for another year. But next, the following season is going to be really, this team's going to start looking very different. Um, as far as the core players are concerned. So we'll see, you know, from everything I've heard between Coach Carroll and John Schneider and I heard an interview with uh, Richard Sherman's brother. I don't know how much he actually speaks on his behalf, but just hearing kind of uh, all that is that it, the one thing we do know is true is that everybody's aware of the situation. That it sounds like there's no real animosity, but clearly they are checking things out and to who to satisfy whom is what we will never know but uh it is a real thing and i think is if if a, if a really good deal is in place uh it could happen but like i said it'll either happen right around the draft or won't be t- it'll be tabled till next year so that's that so we'll see it's sad that this was more real than than rumor <clears throat> as it turned out to be but you know uh, this, it eventually was going to happen. It's just happening sooner than I than I thought it would be. So, um, ironically, the other thing too is I guess I don't know if this is really a sign of anything, but uh, Richard Sherman, you know, he's had his celebrity softball event every seat, every year, and this is the first year he's not doing it. Now that could just be coincidence, or it could be that the fact that maybe uh, it's just was an event that maybe some of the attendance I think was dwindling a little bit, but just kind of ironic that uh, this big community fundraising thing that he normally has every year, he's not doing it for the first time this season. So, I don't know, some writing on the wall there perhaps. Well, let's switch over. I just want to talk a little bit about the Marshawn Lynch thing. Another rumor uh, that's out there that's becoming a little more real than I initially thought. And uh, with Marshawn Lynch, I think it's similar to this in that it is real and it's very clear that uh, Marshawn Lynch does 
definitely have intentions of coming out of retirement to play for the Raiders. Uh, it's become more fact than rumor now that he has that intention. But we are still waiting on several things that have to happen, and that is, one, he's got to file his reinstatement papers. Two, the Seahawks have to agree on something that will be acceptable to them to release control of him, because right now the Seahawks uh, still control Marshawn Lynch, even if, if he comes out of retirement. They are going to do anything but have him back on the squad, because they'd owe him like 10 or $11 million. They're not going to pay him that kind of money. So... They have to agree to some kind of terms. I think they'd like to get a trade, but I find it tough for them to actually do that because that brings in factor number three in that the Raiders have to agree to this, which I, I understand Marshawn Lynch actually met with the Raiders to discuss this, and it sounds like it was a pretty positive meeting. So it sounds like the Raiders would, are entertaining the idea. Marshawn Lynch definitely wants to play for the Raiders. Now the big question is, what do the Raiders, how badly do the Raiders want him? What are they willing to give up or pay for him and what are the Seahawks willing to take in order to make that transaction happen none of these things have happened yet so until that does it's just conversation but it's hard for me to imagine that the fact that it's very clear what Marshawn Lynch wants to do Seahawks don't have a whole lot of leverage in this deal and that if they don't get a trade option from the Raiders and eventually they hit that deadline where they just got to kind of decide, do we put him on the roster or let him go? They're going to let him go. And if the Raiders know that, the Raiders will pick him up uh, once, the, once the Seahawks release him. So uh, inevitably, I think the Seahawks are going to have to just, just uh, you know, are going to have to let him go at some point. I just don't see how they have much leverage in this negotiation. So the question now is really, you know, what do the Raiders want to, you know, do to, to get Marshawn Lynch? How much are they willing to pay him? What's it worth to, to the team? Um, I got to admit, I mean, it'd be pretty cool to see Marshawn Lynch running the ball again. Even, even though it won't be in a Seahawk uniform, uh, it would be fun to see him running for the Raiders. And I wanted, in some ways, it could be a good thing in that. I wanted the Seahawks and the Raiders to meet in the Super Bowl last year. Didn't happen, obviously. Uh, injuries and, the, and whatnot, and the, specifically New England Patriots. And uh, the Atlanta Falcons got in the way of that. But... I think there's a really good chance that could happen this year, and that would be a heck of a fun Super Bowl reunion to watch the Seahawks go against the Raiders if Marshawn Lynch was in the backfield. But that's way getting way the cart ahead of the horse and all that. But it would be fun to see Beast Mode in a uniform running running the ball again, even if it's for the Raiders. Uh, I know at least one guy, a good friend of mine, who's a diehard Raider fan who does not want to see that happen, so I don't think it's unanimously uh, supportive that every Raider fan wants to see Marshawn Lynch in the Raiders uniform because uh, who knows? The reality is just because he's, he decided to come back after being out for a couple couple years doesn't mean he's just going to suddenly be beast mode and be the same back he was when he left. And we know he had injuries. He didn't play a full season for Seattle the last time he was with us and was really not that productive given the injury history that he had. So who's to know whether he can even bring it like he like he did? He is two more years older. Who knows how much tread is left in the tires. But uh, it'd be pretty cool to see. I could, I could see he definitely fits the mold and the, the look of the Oakland Raiders, or I should say soon to be Las Vegas Raiders, Sin City Raiders, or whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> but yes, the, pos the possibility, it is very possible that that could become a reality if those three factors are met. We do know Marshawn Lynch wants to come back, but the Seahawks would have to make something happen and release him release those rights, and the Raiders would have to come up with compensation that, that, that is acceptable to both parties. So, as the world turns, we'll have to keep an eye on that, so we will see uh, what what happens in that regard. One last nit, bit of news I wanted to share with you guys is personal news. It's, it's very exciting for me that I found out this week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I posted a video about an organization called the PFUFA, which is the Pro Football Ultimate Fan Association. Um, and I went with Mark Collins last year, a good friend of mine, who was involved with Save Our Seahawks 20 years ago to keep the Seahawks in Los, uh, in, from going to Los Angeles and keeping them in Seattle. Uh, Mark went to the, uh, joined the, went to Canton. I went with Mark to Canton, Ohio last year during the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies time to be with him when he got inducted into this group, which is essentially like a Hall of Fame for fans. All of the super fans from, from the teams are all members of this group. Had a chance to witness that, record some of their events and be part of that. 
Well, I received my draft card earlier this year um, from the Seahawks fan base, specifically from Earl Trent, Hawk Daddy, as many of the Seahawks fans know him as. I got my draft card back in October, um, back during the uh, Atlanta Falcons game. And earlier this week, I got a call saying that I was officially accepted uh, into the organization and invited to go to Canton, Ohio to attend the ceremonies there and to, I'm not officially in yet, I have to go there and essentially go through the uh, approval process, but it's a very good step in the right direction. So uh, I'll be in Canton this year when Kenny Easley gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. I will actually watch that. I'll be part of the ceremonies and hopefully if everything goes well, become officially inducted into that organization um, during that weekend as well. So it was a very exciting moment for me is it was uh, uh, to get that call was a very exciting time so I'm um, looking forward to uh, in August for making that trip back to uh, Canton Ohio for the second year in a row watching the ceremonies and hopefully being uh, inducted into this really cool organization so just want to share that with you um, very very uh, very exciting news for me personally so um, that's about it for uh, for the for now. Um, thanks for watching this. Uh, we'll be watching all this off-season news and uh, the draft as it starts to get closer. Talk a little bit about what the Seahawks might be doing, what they're going to be looking for. Obviously, offensive linemen on the horizon, more defensive linemen, cornerbacks, and and all that. And uh, I'll fill you in as more and more information becomes available, but. Uh, that's it for now. I just wanted to kind of touch base with you guys, share the, the latest, and uh, I hope you guys will continue to tune in. Um, more exciting stuff coming your way. So uh, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to NorbCam. You can do so with this button right over here. Previous video can be seen right here. And uh, yeah, that is it. So we will talk to you guys soon. Thanks again for watching. Phone call here, cutting off. All right. See you guys soon. I'm out. Go Hawks.